Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to install and initialize MarkLogic on Linux, specifically on either the Red Hat or CentOS Linux environment. I'm running CentOS 7 here and I've already went out and downloaded the latest MarkLogic installer from the developer community. Now when you go down and download the installer, you might be getting an, a more recent version. It all depends on when you go and download the product and that's okay. The installation instructions are going to be similar across versions. And as you can see here, I've got MarkLogic downloaded here in my downloads folder. So the first thing that I'm going to do is bring up the terminal window and enter SU so that I can log in as my root user. I'm going to enter my authentication credentials there. And then once I'm logged in as my root user, I'm going to navigate to the location where I downloaded the MarkLogic installer. And once I've navigated into that directory, then I'm going to key yum space install space and then the name of the MarkLogic installer file name. Now because I don't like to type, I'm going to simply start typing the name of that file and then hit the tab key and let autocomplete take care of it for me and therefore reduce any potential typo errors. Once I've entered in the name of the installer, then I'm going to go ahead and click enter to go ahead and run that installation. When I'm prompted if this download size is okay, I'm going to hit Y for yes and then hit enter again to let that installation go ahead and continue. Now that the installation is complete, I'm going to use a text editor in Linux to modify a configuration file in order to specify the user that MarkLogic will run as. This will enable us to do things like load data from the local file system and put it into our MarkLogic database. And I'm going to put this information in its own dedicated file so that it will be preserved whenever we upgrade MarkLogic on this machine. So in order to do that, I'm going to key in vim space and then slash etsy slash marklogic.conf. And then this opens up my document. I'm going to press I to edit the document. And I'm going to type in here on the first line, marklogic underscore user, and set that equal to my user, the sent user. When I've finished adding that line, I'm then going to hit the escape key and then key in colon WQ for write and quit to then exit out of the Vim editor. Now that I've made that edit to the file, the next thing I need to do is start the MarkLogic service. So I'm going to key in here slash sbin slash service the name of the service, which is MarkLogic, note that the M and the L are capitalized in the service name, and then the command start to start the service. Key and enter, and my MarkLogic service is now started. The final step in order to use MarkLogic is to initialize your new host. So open up a web browser on your machine and go out to localhost colon 8001. This is the admin interface for MarkLogic server. And this will sense that this is a brand new installation here. And it's now going to prompt you to initialize the host, which will create some of the initial databases and application servers that will be associated with your instance. So go ahead and click OK to continue through this process. Now you'll be prompted to determine whether or not you wish to join a cluster. If you're trying to group multiple machines together into a cluster, it's really easy. You would have just simply entered the name of the other host that you'd like this host to join up with. However, as is often the case with installing MarkLogic on a local machine that is indicative of your development environment, usually you're just going to be acting as a single instance in that scenario. So for us, we'll go ahead and click Skip. MarkLogic ships secured, 
which means when you set up and initialize your host, you need to secure it in order to do anything in the instance. That means we must create our administrator account. And so here we can do so. I'm going to use a very simple username and password for this example. MarkLogic also has advanced encryption, which means you can encrypt your data, your log files, your configuration files. And MarkLogic can integrate with third-party key stores to help you manage that encryption. We also ship with an out-of-the-box key store that you can use in case you do not have some third-party key store in your enterprise. In which case, you'll need to set up that out-of-the-box key store that we provide by configuring your wallet credentials for that key store. So I'm going to add one last credential here in case I wish to use encryption. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And when this process completes, MarkLogic Server is now fully initialized on this host and it's ready for us to use. And everything that we do from here on out requires us to authenticate. And there we go, MarkLogic server is now up and running on this machine.